It's running late here on 88.3 FM, The Sting, and we're really thrilled to catch up with this wonderful artist. We've been following his work since the days of Delamitri and his last record, The Great War. Now we're going down to the lower reaches, which sounds, sounds a little awful, but it's not. It's a terrific record. I was so blown away by the songwriting and the quality of the actual mix um, and everything involved in the record itself, an actual album I'm talking about here, people. It's fabulous. His name is Justin Curry, and he's playing at the Music Box with a solo set, uh, first time in many years in Cleveland, coming up Tuesday the mm. 16th. We are thrilled to have Justin Curry join us here uh, via the Skype of sorts, and uh, thank you, sir, for taking the time. Thank you for talking to me. Let's uh, dive right in here into this, into this record. Well, to my view, this is your second solo album, from the Great War. I know you've done a lot of things outside of Delamitri here and there and whatnot, but uh, this is a really great step in a direction four odd years later since the Great War. Yeah. Um, well, I decided I've, I've done I've actually done three solo records, so this technically is the third one. Um, but I, I self produced the first two, and um, I was going to self produce the third one, and I realized it would just be exactly the same as the other two. So, uh, I decided I'd better hire a producer, so um, I hired an American. Oh, go figure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I'd made. It, I'd been thinking about hiring a producer for a, a while because I just knew I'd kind of reached the limits of my um, ability, which um, aren't great. Uh, and I made a little list of records that I really loved the production on, and all three of the producers happened to be American, and. Um, one of them, Mike McCarthy, uh, got back to us, and um, and it was all all happened very quickly. So I was very grateful for that. It's very very cool. I mean, the record does stand out in the way it's recorded for me. Um, yeah, I, I, we went went back to analog and we cut a lot of it live. So it was done. It was really done quite differently from actually any record I've made before. It was quite quite odd, and uh, I had very little to do with the. Uh, the arrangements, um, I mean, the ba- and what the band played. I mean, these guys just came in and just played, and it sounded great. So uh, very unusual for me because I usually kind of get my fingers, um, you know, uh, I get involved in every sort of stage of the process, probably to the detriment of the record. So this time I took a, uh, I, they had to kind of gag me in the corner of the studio so I didn't contribute too much. <laughs> but that really did free you up, though. I think that that may have, I don't know, freed up your performance a little bit, a little less burden. Well, yeah, I mean, I, when I self-produce, I tend to really, I kind of hammer everything in, into shape, and I'm, I am I get really, really obsessed with things being in tune and in time to the point where actually the, the records can sound a bit uptight, um, uh, whereas this record was really just about performance. So all I really did was sing, um, and that was it. We did a bit of editing on the vocals. A lot of the vocals that we used were, were live takes, which horrified me at first, but eventually I thought, you know, this is fine. Just just leave it be. So he kind of taught me quite a, a lot of um, valuable lessons in recording Mike McCarthy, uh, which is just, you know, it, it doesn't have to be right. It just has to be good. Well, lyrically, I was definitely taken back that I, I always used to joke about, you know, the, the people who try to be like the, the singer-songwriter troubadours have the hardest time because they're trying to fit a mold, but you've really done a great job just singing these songs. And I, and I mean that in the way of an artistry as opposed to just a performance you're trying to get on tape and then put together a package and all that kind of stuff. It does feel like that performance probably because of that, that freedom mm-hmm. you were given. One yeah. of the songs that really took me away was uh, was early in the record. Every song's the same. I thought, wow, he's actually singing to me how to do a song. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hopefully I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to. D- <laughs> I wouldn't want to teach anybody uh, actually how to write a song because, like most songwriters, I'm utterly clueless how uh, how it happens. Um, I, I read a, a really interesting Neil Young quote uh, the other day where he, apparently he said that songs are like rabbits. They come out of the holes when you least expect them to. And I to- totally subscribe <laughs> to that idea. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I, th- I think that's kind of a love song. Every song's the same. I'm not entirely, entirely sure uh, what it's, uh, what it's trying to say, but I'm definitely not trying to teach anybody how to write a song. That's for sure. A love song to the songwriting, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's about right. That's about right. Todd. Priscilla, has this drum machine that I swear is the same one I had in my Casio keyboard about 25 years ago. Yeah, and- well, Mike's quite into his, his uh, vintage um, vintage sounds. I think we might have got some of the sounds from that uh, beatbox from uh, possibly from an auto harp. 
Um, but they'll all they'll all be from the same source. There'll be some guy in a Japanese factory that works for Casio that you know that just uh, that makes these things up and puts them on a chip. So yeah, that, that's about right. Casio sounds about right. It certainly took my attention. I'm like, wow, that's like something I used to do, and and yet. Of course, you do it so much better than me. So, <laughs> well, I was, again, that was Mike. I, I had nothing to do. I just played the guitar and sang. One of the things that was amazing, and I guess a, a credit to Mike, but something that you're going to inherit here is that the album is concise and cohesive because a lot of the songs, like old records they used to listen to out of the '70s, I think, um, yeah. they they kind of overlap way down in the mix at the end of each song. Yeah. If, you, if you listen, yeah. per chance. Uh, it, is that something that kind of took you by surprise? Did, did did you see that coming? No, I mean that was that was that was my doing really, and that I, um, I did the the sequence and and all that stuff. I've always wanted to uh, make sort of seamless albums so that there there are only breaks every so often. There are, there are breaks between the songs when there need to be. Other than that, um, I quite like doing crossfade as much as I can. I mean. In the old days when we were Delamitri were on a major label, the the record companies used to really hate you doing crossfades. I mean, especially in the CD era, where you know radio programmers would hate it because they would hear the tail end of the previous track when they queued up the track they wanted to play, and all that kind of stuff. But um, I, I mean, it's something I'd like to get more into actually. Make one of those seamless records like uh, you know what's going on, where everything just sort of fades in and out of of uh, of, of each of, of each you know, previous song. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a sort of theory that in the in the internet age, we're moving away from the concept of making albums and we're just releasing tracks or collections of tracks. And I'm finding it very hard to give up the idea of an album, even though the, the album as a format exists really purely. The format is really um, defined by how much audio information you could get on a 33 and a third RPM vinyl records um but it's just it's it, like feature films you know three real feature films it's just the right length to kind of mm-hmm. tell a story or the right length to put across the variety of the material that you've got so i'm i'm still really in love with the idea of an, of, of the album as a format you mentioned a couple a couple records in Marvin Gaye and i was just thinking of uh i have a box set from Stevie Wonder a couple years ago a 4 CD box set and it wasn't until years after I'd already been listening to it that I realized that the songs actually cross over. They were actually melded yeah. together. And I know Pink Floyd did that with the greatest hits compilation. They totally mixed up the songs and cross. Well, I mean, we did it. We did it a bit on some of the Delamitri stuff and, and in the analog era, it was quite hard to do it because you would finish all your mixes and then you would have to create a, like an, a crossfade edit. Um, so you'd have to have a sort of a, a strip of tape, where you did the crossfade between the two mixes, which was vector. I mean, it's the same as the, the way they used to do um, uh, fades and uh, um, crossfades and in, in, in movies. So you had to make a sort of separate edit piece, which would technically be a technically be a copy. And it was it was a real pain doing it. So people hated doing it because it would take hours, mm-hmm. hours and hours and hours. But um, if you yeah, if you insist enough, then you can get the engineers to do these things. I but now it. it's dead easy. Now you just do it on a you could do it on a bloody phone now, you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we take it for granted now. It's just not yeah, the same totally. thing. Very bizarre. Well, in re- in reference to Delamitri, you've you've gone back to some of the things. There's a lot mm-hmm. of confusion about the status of this band and 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 the future of the band. And by that I just mean in terms of what's out in the world, not necessarily collaborating, working together. The last mm-hmm. time you and I spoke, you were on hiatus, at least yeah. and yeah. during the Great War. And since then, the reissues have come out. You did a reunion tour in the UK, and yep. now there's a live album out. But when people say, is Delamitri still together, most people say they're not. So I guess I'm asking you, just yeah. to clarify for me, and and for those of us who are fans and are still collecting all those wonderful records, what's out mm-hmm. there? Um, I mean, we're, we're sort of still together. It's just that we don't... I mean, we can only do things that uh, that don't lose us huge, huge amount of money. <laughs> so, Fair enough. I mean, the only reason we toured in the UK is because we got offered a really big gig in Glasgow at a festival called Celtic Connections, which kind of paid for everything else. So that allowed us to actually get together and rehearse for a couple of weeks and uh, and do the tour. Um, I mean, we would have come over to America if we could have afforded to do it. We just couldn't afford to do it. Uh, so we so we we kind of ex- we kind of exist if somebody if somebody raises the cash for us to exist. It's a very expensive thing getting the five of us in a room for some reason. Don't ask me why. I would do it for nothing. But uh, 
so yeah, I mean, Ian and I are still, I mean, we still run a business called Della Mutri and we still write songs together every now and then. But, um, you know, I, 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 I doubt we'll ever meet a, uh, another record. I don't, I mean, there's no, there's, there's no real hunger in the, mm-hmm. in the world for Della Mutri to make a, another record. So I doubt that's ever going to happen. A little bit right here. I'll, I'll give you, <laughs> I'll cheer right. you on. Just a little bit right here in Cleveland. You could, you could bring in a, <laughs> Look, if you give us five bucks, we'll do it. Primo. Well, I am. I am trying to. All my friends keep telling me you have to go get those reissues because all the amazing B sides and all the the oh, stuff. Oh yeah, is that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Finally compiled, and and those of us yeah. who have been slaving over getting them together. <laughs> yeah, I, we put a few of the B sides out on a, a compilation called "Lies with Love" in the late nineties that came out with the the greatest hits. But I think there's gonna. There, I think Universal, that own our catalogue now, are gonna do another two reissues of the of the last two albums. Some of the Suckers Parade and Can You Do Me Good, and there's quite a lot of pretty good B sides. In fact, really good B sides on um, on those. So I'm quite looking forward to them doing that. Very cool. We look forward to it. Well, Justin Curry has his new record, The Lower Reachers, and he's bringing the uh, tour in support of that to Cleveland. Thank goodness. Hallelujah. We're looking forward to this at the Music Box, Tuesday night, the 16th. And we thank him for once again taking the time with us. And great fortune on the tour. Enjoy being back here in the States, and we'll see you Tuesday night. Thanks, Todd. I'm really looking forward to it.